Um, I'm Jay Michaeline. Uh, I live in Brooklyn. I used to write about comics once upon a time. Sometimes I wrote prose. Back in the day, I used to yell on Twitter. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, and I read a lot of goddamn BL. Um, so I'm here to talk with this fine group of people um, about lots of different things. So we'll just start with Casey. Uh, hi, I'm Casey Nowak. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I have four Ignatz Awards, and my most well-known work is Girl Town, probably. Hi. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm here with my new book, which is called Boy Chest, and you should all buy it because it was expensive yeah. to print. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Mock. Uh, pronouns are they, she. Uh, I uh, recently put out a book called Die Horny. It's about, it's about wanting to die horny. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, it's kinky and fun. Uh, my name's Shannon Wright. Uh, pronouns she, they. Just like Jam, I am always reading gay shit, horny shit. I think the pipeline from super religious to super horny is like, <laughs> just, just something that happens. It's between, a straight line. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like that. The Christian kid who's now into Halloween is like a circle now. A straight line, you say, Rebecca? Huh? <laughs> there are no straight lines. There are no straight lines. <laughs> it's a straight line through a mirror maze. But yeah, I'm here amongst you freaks today. Uh, I'm just happy to be here, chilling out. Left my little two baby cats at home, so they'll be fine. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Rosemary Valero O'Connell, uh, they, she. Um, I am the artist of Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. I've done uh, Don't Go Without Me. Uh, every comic I've ever done is gay, but the last thing that I did um, was for uh, this little anthology I'm doing with my friends, Datura, which is about uh, liking getting fisted by your girlfriend so much you grow a copy of her inside your body. So, um, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Hi, everybody. My name is Ngozi Yukazu, and I make a comment called Check Please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clapping about that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, that's all I've done. I mean, oh, yeah, no, I have books out. Hey. Um, so I have a book out, February 2024. Uh, it's drawn by the illustrious Madeline Rupert. It's called Bunt. Yeah. There's gay people in that, too. Uh, and then I have another book for DC Comics, but who cares? All right. All right, so we'll roll through and get started. So the first question I had for the team is, what's your history with BL Comics? Ooh, uh, so when I went to college in my freshman year, we had a share manga day where we brought in manga that we had on our computer, like scans and things, scanlations. I brought in a, har a hard drive, the uh, Yaoi manga that I had collected in high school. It was 10 gigabytes. <laughs> Um, a Yowie hard drive. A Yowie hard drive. Uh, by the end of college, it was 35 gigabytes. I've, I, I have consumed all of the Yowie on the internet that I could consume. <laughs> between the, specifically between the years of 2005 and 2012. That's, that's it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that a Bush good. presidency. I'm, I feel like right now. I have, they called me 10 gigs mock. <laughs> it's, it's very important to me. <laughs> Uh, my history uh, with you it is um, back when you had like the shared family computers and stuff and just like secretly printing <laughs> out pictures of your your uh, your gay ships. I um, printed out a lot of Shishomaru stuff. With, For the young people, <laughs> there was with, no um, incognito mode then. With, with multiple <laughs> people um, that I'm not going to name ships because I don't need to be canceled. <laughs> For the people I shipped him with, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where my my journey started. It start, also started. Um, I mean, I'm a Sasu Naru shipper and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh, I was literally just telling my friend before I came here. Um, I always designate one character in a series, uh, and I and I say you're gonna get passed around like a blunt. So, um, Naruto was the one getting passed around. Uh, 
And I was like scouring the internet for anything I could find. <laughs> so it was like whatever I could find. And if I could clear the history as fast as I could, because again, I grew up super religious. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, my journey also started on the family computer. Um, I, when I was like, I think 13 or 12, I was part of this like live journal group of people who were like doing scanlations of like Aeroguro stuff, like just like depraved like <laughs> shit, like really, really horrific No tags stuff. in those days. No. Yeah. Um, the Wild West. And I was like, devour, I don't know, I, yeah, my, uh, I don't know how, like, present the influence is in my work now, but I read a lot of, like, truly evil shit um, when I was <laughs> the tender age of 11, but I also, like, the comics that got me into making comics were most, it was, like, I come from, like, shoujo manga completely, and mostly people like Moto Hagio. like, that's mm -hmm. kind of my, oh my, my root in comics in general, so, like, Heart of Thomas was fucking huge, uh, Tezuka's MW was, like, one of the first, Ooh, like, yes, yes, MW's yeah. Evil. It's so yeah. good. It's evil. <laughs> That's an evil book. Yeah. It's great. It's amazing. Do you guys remember live journal kink memes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where I got my start. Uh, it's a great, I mean, it, it, those weren't the first like comics I read. It was mostly people writing depraved comment fic mm -hmm. of just, and it's so funny that you brought the word canceled into the conversation. <laughs> the word canceled is in the room with us. <laughs> the amount of Star Trek fan fiction that if we talked about it here would get all of us canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Permanent horny jail. Yeah, it was just the space where you could like, well, a bunch of teens and probably adolescents were just, I mean, writing about things that were sexual and weird, mm -hmm. but using their favorite characters, mm -hmm. Spock, to do it. Um, <laughs> So I kind of, we've kind of gone away from the question of like what BL we were into or what BL raised us. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be BL actually. Like, I mean, any queer, anything I think fits yeah. within this realm. Mm. Yeah, I, I think all of our family computers have seen the worst things in the world. <laughs> But that's where it started. I had my own At computer. Wow. So it's all, it's all okay. dark stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice. It was my dad's work laptop that all of this came Yes. <laughs> all right, so we have the financial Sorry, reports. And oh, dear God, is that Naruto? <laughs> Very tense conversations were had. I, I had a folder. I had a folder on my desktop. I thought this was so clever. I would spell things backwards. Ah, <laughs> wow. That was my, like... Way of encrypting things when I was 12. <laughs> no one's gonna open this folder you were called a Yag. Yeah, I know. It's like, you're not gonna find, like, my dad doesn't Yag care Mark. about, like, these weird drawings of, like, Matt and Ty beating each other up or whatever. <laughs> Do you all remember your first? First? The first what? I remember. <laughs> re Fill in the blank for yourself. I do. I remember being confused. It was <laughs> sexual experiencer. <laughs> no, um, I do remember one of the first manga that, or I guess it was BL, that I would read in secret at Barnes & Noble. I'm sorry, Borders. Yeah. Some of you guys don't remember Borders. You were born when it closed. They had um, the yaoi. They, they didn't age restrict it. But no, fake. Yeah, I bought so you, you guys much. remember fake? Oh, yeah. That like, was my wow. first. Fake. Some a weird episode of uh, NYPD Blue. Holy shit. Uh, so, okay, talk about... No one's canceling anyone in this room. Uh, I, this is a safe space. They can't cancel us all. <laughs> right here. It's my plan. I um, <laughs> would go to the Barnes & Noble. I would sit my little ass down, and I would read every single volume of Loveless. If anyone remembers um, the, the old cat ear virginity manga that was going around back in the day. Um, that's one of my first memories of like a series that I was like, oh. And I, I think my mom, I don't know, my mom would like look at the covers and she'd be like, oh, that's, they seem like they, they're buddies, right? And I was like, yeah, I just, the art's really beautiful and I'm really interested in this medium, so can you back off? Um, but I also, and I hope we're at like a kink panel, so I'm gonna get a little gross. I hope that's chill. Um, the like first uh, like doujinshi, like scan, I don't know, whatever that I read where I was like, oh, something, like a switch is flipping. I don't know if anyone is gonna remember this, but there was a comic that was like being passed around, I remember, that was about this like, <laughs> this demon um, that gets 
fucked to death by this <laughs> priest with a gun, and then he comes back to life so they can keep fucking. Um, that was, that's a pretty foundational brick in my, uh, in my like. I'm just assuming all y'all are Googling right now. Yeah. That's what I'm like, a gun, <laughs> death, sex. <laughs> Quick. Yeah, look it up, it's great stuff. Ooh. Again, I, I, I can't pinpoint. Um, I feel like all my ships uh, and stuff like that and uh, BL and Yaoi was definitely some hot like professor and I was like, oh, okay. Um, what are you doing with this, this uh, other dude and stuff? <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is very interesting. Okay, you're grabbing him by the waist. Um, this, is, this is great stuff. Um, <laughs> It's honestly, it's it's blanking to me. I was before I came here. I was like, what was I into? <laughs> it just feels like so far back. Cause again, I I would go between like my parents' computer and then my aunt's computer because I was working at her house during the summer, and so I used up all my parents' ink. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna use uh, my oh aunt's my ink because I'm on like her clock and she's also paying me, and she just has no clue why her ink keeps running out. <laughs> and so I just kept printing and I just kept printing more things, like just pictures. And I just had a Ziploc bag that I would bring. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> and I just kept my little Ziploc bag and I would print my full color pictures and stuff. And then I would just wait, take wait. it home when my mom picked me up and she'd be like, oh, how was your day at your aunt's? And I was like, it was good. <laughs> productive. productive. It was productive. It was really good. I worked really was hard. Was this like a gallon bag or a quart bag? <laughs> yeah. um, How um, much volume of yaoi are we talking about? It was about? a garbage bag. Well, it, was, it, was like, it, was, it was letter size. It was like a, like a gallon bag. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta keep it dry. Yeah, yeah. Because, because here's, here's the thing: some pictures were smaller and bigger than others, and I didn't want to bend things, so oh. just put it in a gallon bag. You're so bold for using something translucent. I know. <laughs> like, I know. I didn't. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> I was, I was young. We were making up our own <laughs> rules. We were, yeah, we were going. We were writing our own rules of desire. Yeah. It was very important and formative. It was. It was. You guys, you guys are so resourceful. Yeah. I feel like everything I had was inside my brain, you know? <laughs> I, like, I never, like, read fan fiction or anything. I was like, mm, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> All the fan fiction that I, 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 re I remember the first, like, Lime I read. Oh, yeah. Lim oh. Wait, what's the difference between lime and lemon? Lime, lime is boys. <laughs> really? I think so. Lime is, is boys. Is lemon just Lemon is boy everything? girl. Lem I guess you could say lemon. I don't remember anymore. Yeah, sorry. I was Because uh, I was going to bring up the Sakura Lemon yeah. okay. fan fiction archive. Uh, yeah. We have yeah. an expert have uh, a... sitting in the audience. <laughs> Thank you. We have a fan fiction scholar in the front row who Christy has clarified. Is right there. <laughs> right, so lime is shown in I and lemon is explicit. Per Dr. Sipdeo. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And I. The first wow. lemon I read where it was boy boy, I didn't re realize what was happening. They were describing what was happening, but they were being very vague about it. <laughs> and I was very confused about what thing was going in what hole, and I was so distressed oh my God. by the puzzle that I was trying to put. I was imagining what was happening. I was like, wait a second. But that, that, does he have that part? <laughs> but it was, that was the thing. They were subtle. They like never yeah. explicitly said what was happening. Oh my God. I... So you could imagine it and you could sort of be like, oh, wait a sec. This sort of works for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, so, I'm suddenly recognizing something in myself I have no words for. I am realizing, well, kind of realizing, I'm thinking about some of the, like the lesbian fan fiction I read on the, the Sakura Lemon Fan Fiction Archive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was a place with some evil shit. <laughs> for real. Uh, but I remember, I'm thinking now about like the like Sailor Uranus, Sailor Neptune shit that I was reading. And it was definitely not written by women. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, some right? weird shit happened in that. Like, <laughs> some stuff that like doesn't usually happen. I don't know. No, sometimes you have to like you're you're reading it and you have to sit back and be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're just like, <laughs> but I thought you were in a bathtub. Or yeah. <laughs> You're like, how did you get your arm here? Right <laughs> from here. Yeah. This is me reading any BL that involves like a car sex scene. Oh god. Where I'm like, I just don't. 
And the car seat's not that big. You and can't. The back seat's not that big. Okay, sure. The sure, author okay. can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> they don't own a car. I'm I, also always thinking about, I mean, that's also a kink you can get into, but I'm also thinking about like, like a big wheel truck just being like, <laughs> what's going on here? What's, what's going on over there? What's going on here? Well, I actually like that you bring up Casey, um, Sailor Neptune, Sarah Uranus, because one of the things I was thinking about, you know, in terms of as my first, so I think I have a couple of firsts. I think I could make an argument for yellow um, that my friend Ariel Edlin handed me in middle school, and I was like, sure, what's yellow. this? Yellow. And then I was like, oh, these boys like each other. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that was allowed. Um, <laughs> but actually, like, thinking more about, like, card capture Sakura and, like, Sharon's affection towards Yue. Yeah. Affection. Um, mm. Or thinking about Sailor Moon, for example, and S Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus, and thinking about Fruits Basket, like, mm. with a number of, like, queer, um, like, just either themes or outright mm -hmm. um, relationships. Uh, and thinking about how some, like, and I think some combination of those are also partially my first, too. Yeah, yeah as definitely. Well as shout out to Kill Carl Mayo, <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> which I forgot about until like three weeks ago and uh, like immediately started reading the Wikipedia page and died about <laughs> yeah. what was going on in there. It's interesting because it's like, like we're, we're all mentioning like a lot of hardcore stuff, but I, I also think a lot of the subtle things is what really brought us into the circle because. You would just see just how delicate and like like I I know shonen people don't mean to do this, but I'm just like why do you guys talk about moving heaven and earth <laughs> for each other? And I'm just like you guys are giving us the best depiction of love right now. Yeah. Like he's your moon, that's your sun, and I'm just like this is just awakening something in me. Like I want. I, I mean, I think about Trigun, for instance. And oh, like, my God. Bashwood. Like, I think about Bashwood. Dude, I just watched that for the first yes. time. Yes. <laughs> so I think about Bashwood and just, like, how they have that one line where he said, I wanted to share my tomorrows with him. And Dude, shut up. That sounds like... <laughs> and I'm just, like... I'm, That's... like, who is writing? Like, this is romance. Shannon, is... I think that sounds extremely straight. <laughs> I think that's very. It's, uh, I, I know, it's but but well. there is For, like and there's it's like, straight of one of the. It, yeah, no, totally. It's very heterosexual. Yeah, romance. extremely. Oh my god. Yeah, there's no like. Yeah. There's, there's no like affection there. He's like he's like him and the girl, but. Yeah, the there's girl. no reason for him to grip his back like that. Well, you know? That's. It's interesting because so much of like coming to terms with queerness as mm -hmm. an adolescent is about trying to figure out like the boundaries between yeah. what's friendship and what's romance. Because yeah. mm. there's no playbook. Yeah. You have to figure out: Do I love my best friend or do I love my best friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. And so every time you see that kind of intense friendship, you're, you I feel like we recognize it. Yeah. Because queerness is like outside of just romance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's something about it. Yeah. Queerness is like anything queer, outside of a normal heterosexual romance. If you broaden the definition, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can we get can we get messy? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. As, can we, I mean, can I don't think we encourage mess here. So <laughs> you don't you don't think we encourage mess? I'm joking. We encourage mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do we think about Tumblr, kink, and purity culture? Boo. Ah. <laughs> Not the ooh. Now we actually gonna get canceled, damn. Uh, I don't know, I'm... What, what is period culture? What I is mean, this? Okay. Purity, purity So culture. how about, purity, how about this? Purity. Like, purity. Oh. Because like, <laughs> it's, because, it, okay. So there's always this um, kind of in the periphery of people enjoying their little kink meals, like of just people being nasty <laughs> or abusive or poking holes in each other and shit. There's people saying like, we can't consume that because it sets a bad example for other people or like, oh my God, that's biphobic if you depict like these people doing that. Yes, all of that. Yeah, so like there's, it's funny that we talk about the <coughs> blurred lines. Oh God, not Robin Thicke, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but talking about how blurry it is at the at some of these boundaries, at some of these like um, these different lines between how queerness exists outside of that, but also it kind of muddles those lines. Yeah, it's like a, it needs to. It it, it yeah. needs to. It's that thing of like oh, when people when people are saying like oh, you can't 
you can't wear a, a doggy mask at Pride. It's like, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be there. <laughs> like, yeah. where, how, how do you think that has changed? How do you... Do you think that's? I don't think there's anything new about that. I think there's always. I think be it's a reaction. Yeah. It's a react. Like the the fad of BL has definitely taken on steam, yeah. and I think that that's a natural reaction. But it, it's couched in like conservative uh, uh, hysteria about um, pure uh, keeping things pure for children, child pornography, p porn being uh, viewed by children. It's a it's. And it's dangerous to draw those boundaries. It's dangerous to draw boundaries and say, this is gay, this is straight, this is bisexual. Mm -hmm. When you limit people that way, they naturally find outlets like BL, which is a, about blurring boundaries mm. and letting things be whatever you want them to be in the moment. And so it's, as much as they fight it, it's just gonna make BL stronger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wow. conclusion. Well, I, I, I feel, sorry, I feel a couple of ways about it. In, in one aspect, I see like a lot of young people uh, participating in this kind of thing. And I find, I disagree with them, but I find it encouraging that they're so interested in taking care of each other's mm, well-being, yeah. like mm -hmm. mental well-being. Like I think that's really fascinating. <laughs> um, they are fucking annoying about it. <laughs> But they're, you know, like a lot of them are teenagers, um, and I was, I was, I was way worse when I was a teenager. <laughs> like, uh, um, but it's also like, like you said, it's like it just, it's an extension of like American puritanism, just in general. Like, you know, there's yeah, that, they're react, they're they're. Yeah. There's no. They're there, copying the way that people talk to them. I there's think. like that really good article that came out like seven years ago about the Marvel movies. That's like everybody's sexy and nobody fucks. Nobody fucks. Mm. That's a great everybody's article. Everybody's hot and nobody fucks. <laughs> like, and it's just like, you know, I Nothing's mean, it goes gross. back to fucking. It goes, this is gonna sound crazy, but it goes back to fucking Mickey Mouse. Like, <laughs> Mickey Dude. and Minnie don't fuck. Tell us, Casey. Uh, Tell us. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that fuck. that adjective fucking was doing something crazy in that sentence. <laughs> It goes back to fucking making money. Yeah, it's just, it's that like, could be your thing. It goes back to fucking Mickey. The, <laughs> yeah. the more that Mickey and Minnie don't fuck, the more people are going to fantasize about them fucking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and it, but also, like, I remember remembering, like, reading, there's this amazing book about, like, Disney and American imperialism, and uh, Disney actually, like, had a bunch of this book, like, sent out and, like, dumped into the ocean. <laughs> this is, a, it's like a weird long story. But they point out in like the first chapter, like Donald Duck has nephews. Yes. But nobody has like children <laughs> until, you know, Max way in the nineties or whatever. But anyways, fuck Disney. <laughs> is is what I, is I do what think I there's think. I do think there's kink in Disney though, right? Because like Goofy is around and yet Pluto gets walked on a leash. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh yeah. Right? But also, yeah. also, Goofy definitely fucks. Yeah. Goofy. I mean, technically, oh, yeah. by he definition, he definitely fucks. Yup, yup, yup. DM relationship. It's a very right? pure relationship. Have you? Have, um, has anyone here seen the Atlanta episode about uh, the Goofy movie? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. so it's good. It's so funny. It blew my mind. I like. I thought it was like, real. <laughs> I, I, I like the uh, the part where. Um, he's like, I was trying to draw Mickey, and so he was like, get that white boy out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was a digression. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Atlanta talk. Watch Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I do agree with you, though, that I, I don't know, I, I think I see where the impulse is coming from in young people, and it's like, fandom is usually a space that you can exert some measure of control over. Like, you mm. can't, you can't affect the things that you are sort of, like, wailing against in any, uh, larger context, but you can, you know, uh, yell at another gay person online that they're a perfect, but it, it turns into that, into this sort of like race for respectability politics amongst mm -hmm. like yeah. gay people. Um, and it's, I don't know, very, uh, it's like strange and it's sad to see that like. It feels counterproductive. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's such yeah, a shame You, you could point it's a finger, like, but you should point a finger at the, the systems that cause us to sort of have to splinter into all these mm -hmm, little groups. Yeah, mm -hmm. and hide away and, and not, and like repress things, you know? And it's also like, we can't sanitize ourselves to a point that like, I don't know, they're like banning heart stopper, which is the most like, Soft. the toothless, yeah, like the, sanitized like version the, of like That's the a, natural next step to say, right. this like, is Like we can't be palatable this, enough, so yeah. just be a pervert. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's the thing. Something like uh, BL has sort of like breached into the mainstream, but it began as a subversive act. It is subversion against the norm, mm -hmm. and it will continue to be that way. B you can sanitize BL, you can say this is good BL, this is right BL, and mm -hmm. there's wrong BL, and we have to draw a little circle around it. But it's always going to get out of that little border the more you try to draw it. So, <laughs> yeah. it, it, at its heart, it's always going to be subversive, and it, it, you can't really sanitize it. I'm yeah. trying to figure out if Heart of Thomas is problematic. Ooh. I, I hope like, so. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. God, Moto. If you haven't read Moto Hagio, just do it. I don't yeah. Know. And I mean, that's the beginning. Yeah. That's. The beginning. <laughs> I mean, I think kind of what all of you are touching on makes me think about, you know, who art is for in general. Mm -hmm. um, the question of, you know, um, there's a BL that I really enjoy um, that is kind of a story in two parts. But one of the the initial main couple. Um, one of them is physically abusive to the other. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the story splits off and there's a romance that happens, both of them separately. Mm -hmm. So both the person who received abuse as well as the person who was abusive. Um, and I've seen some writing about it um, and I can imagine the wide variety of thoughts about like what it means to create a comic where someone who abused somebody then gets to have a happy ending. Mm -hmm. um, and I... Also, I think, Casey, kind of what you said about it being somewhat inspiring that all these teens and younger people are trying so hard to take care of each other, which I do think is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thinking about like who is art for and what is the function of it for, like, of course, I don't think I would ever shove the latter half of that story in front of anybody yeah. who um, endured physical abuse in any capacity. No way. Um, but might I shove it in front of someone who was the abuser and is trying to, like, you know, make amends or whatever else. No, because you shouldn't shove comics like that in front of anybody. <laughs> but like, is there a role for stuff like that is really, to me, what we're talking about. And it sounds like, to me, I don't, I don't know what you guys think. Like, what are these comics for? Who are these comics for? Mm -hmm. Who makes them? Like, in your mind, like, how do you envision a lot of this stuff? Well, I think there's like, it's interesting that we're having this conversation around kink as well, because mm -hmm. like, uh, when we think about kink and we think about the practice of it, of doing a scene, of creating this sort of, alternative reality which is real it has real consequences yeah. it has real effects but it exists on a different plane you know like yeah. <laughs> when you're getting the shit beat out of you consensually it is a very different <laughs> you know yes. like it, it does not exist on the same plane yeah. as like what the equivalent of that situation happening outside of this space of like eroticism and of whatever and i have always found that like comics or fiction occupies like yep. a really similar space of like here's a controlled place in which to enact or explore or come into contact with an idea, a dynamic, whatever, either for like the purpose of eroticism mm -hmm. or just for a narrative purpose. Um, and it's, again, it's, it's, I think it is uh, an important thing to have sort of that idea of it in conversation where like, yes, they are, these are real things that real people created. They yeah. affect us in real ways. They exist on a, on a different plane of reality, I think, than sort of the, mm -hmm. the acts that they depict necessarily. So to piggyback off of that, um, everyone's favorite lesbian, Susan Sontag, uh, <laughs> once spoke, she's an art critic. She's, she has a whole essay where she basically delineates the, the purpose of art in general. And art, in my belief, it used to serve the purpose of presenting morality. Stories are what teach us how to be good people and not to hurt others. It's how we teach kids how to blah, 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 learn about their traditions, et cetera. Yeah. Art today does not necessarily, and in my belief, should not serve that purpose. I don't think that art should be created to be moral. I know art can be inspirational to, for people, stories can help others, but they are spaces where we can step outside of reality to yeah. explore things that normally you would not do in reality. Yeah. And I think kink, for example, is that B b creating a very explicit boundary over mm -hmm. exploring the darkness that each of us has, yeah. what turns us on, and yeah. what things are wrong. Yeah. And I think for some people, it's hard for them to compartmentalize and to hold those truths in both hands mm -hmm. um, because they're afraid they'll spill into one another. But yeah. if you're mindful, you c you're good. You, yeah. <laughs> you can be freaky. It, it is a safe space, actually. Yeah. Like safe your, space. your body does not have to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, 
I mean, that's how I got into like BL everything. Like it's completely tied into my, you know, you see me here, full blown leather dyke before you. That 100% comes from like having these spaces where I could dip a yeah. toe into these uh, these types of desires in a way that like did not have to even be mediated through the context yeah. of my body, how mm -hmm. other people were relating to my body, how anything. Um, and that would have no effect on my physical well-being, right. you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that junction, I just want to shout out to all the ace readers of mm -hmm. BL. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> um, there are quite a lot of them, myself included. Ace spec. Um, and I, I do think, like, that separation between the body and self actually does, at least for me as an ace reader, and also as an autistic reader, like, it really actually helps me piece things together sometimes. Yeah. Or, like, helps me understand my own role yeah. in those feelings and helps me understand the feelings of others. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially if you're on the spectrum. I've always thought of my sexuality as like a like a, a mirror sort of th those like funhouse mirror mazes mm -hmm. where like if you shine a light through one end, the light isn't actually going to come out on the other side and and you you have to sort of go in and like search around for it. Mm -hmm. Um and having to navigate reality and do that is very challenging. Yeah. Especially because there's so many um uh expectations put on you in reality by society of like what is sexuality yeah. what is sexuality in relation to the body that uh that you have and the body people perceive you have and it's it's too much it's very weighty yeah. um mm -hmm. and, but there's space inside fantasy to access uh, very natural urges that everyone has no matter where you are on the spectrum yeah. uh and oh, i forgot how i was going to end this thought <laughs> Pretty there you complete. go. That's, pretty it. Yeah. That's, That's it. That's how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> I do um, want to pivot us a little bit more towards kink because I think we, uh -huh. I, I, I feel like we've given Biel a lot of attention, which it deserves. <laughs> um, but I also think kink is kind of part of this um, conversation too. Um, I think probably similar questions to how we opened with regards to Biel. You know, what's your history with it? Um, and of course, you should share whatever you feel comfortable sharing. But what is your history with it? Um, what was your first? How, how has it impacted your work, actually, also? I think we've kind of a little bit talked about that with BL, like, obliquely. So for impact on work, I think, is what I'm, I'm super interested in, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm a middle grade author. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, no. no. <laughs> but that, that, that's the interesting yeah. thing. Like, I, I mean, actually, you could probably speak to it more, but yeah. it's so hard to professionally do work that is like YA, yeah. middle grade, yeah. and then also want to just make lots of porn on the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Please, please. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can take over. So. Um, yeah, being on this panel, I was like, dang, I'm kind of like a like sitting out like a sore thumb because I, my career has primarily taken into the kids middle grade space, um, and to an extent, I've been pigeonholed into that place because they're just like, mm -hmm. wow, we have a black author that's serving the black kids, and we need more of them, and therefore we're gonna, help. can you do this? Can you reach out to this person? Can you be a beacon of light? And yada yada yada, and I'm just like, as much as I love making that work, and I'm good at making that work, there is times where I'm just like, um, cause I, cause, cause we've seen it online before where you have cartoonists and you have animators who try to delve into other things and then the fandoms come and attack and you have doxing that occurs and you have people saying, how dare you um, do adult things as an adult when you, <laughs> have a career in like children's media and stuff like that and they're speaking to like a 36 year old and you're like okay I guess <laughs> I'm forever in kids land <laughs> um, so that's where I'm coming from in a place where I'm currently getting myself out of that sphere and I was worried about it because I was just like this is my income this is my means of putting food on my table kitty food in my cat's food bowls and stuff like that <laughs> but there comes a point there there came a point um where i recently like broke where i was just like i'm not happy um i'm not seeing like i want to express this queerness that i've come into which i've always known that i was a part of um and i don't want to let this whole expectations that i put on myself and that other people have put on me to service their kids mm -hmm. um to keep me from making work that really resonates with me. Um, 
I've gotten back into my sketchbook. I've gotten back into like reading BL. Um, I've secretly been drawing my own kinky stuff and doing some other personal stuff on the side. You've been holding out on me, Shannon? I have. <laughs> I have to catch you up on some stuff. Okay. Um, and um, it's been really freeing and stuff because that one thing that I've learned and that I figured out about working in, in uh, like BL and just queer comics and kink stuff is I've become familiarized with the human body and just how much I adore and love it. And I love like all the folds, all the hairiness, everything that comes with it. I've gotten back to like looking at myself in the mirror and just like appreciate taking pictures of myself mm -hmm. here and there. And there's come this freedom of, of going into that space and being like, um, like we were talking about like closing that door and just exploring that part of yourself that again growing up was really shunned um, for me it was just like don't get into that stuff like don't have sex before marriage and all this other shit like that and um, being around a good community of people and just these queer spaces that I'm just like wow I feel like I'm discovering a part of myself that's always been there that I'm slowly like falling in love with and <laughs> Um, I don't know, it's just like a beautiful thing, especially as like a black queer person who grew up like super southern Pentecostal, mm. <laughs> deep south church. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Sorry, granddad. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. But it's fun. I, I'm glad to be up here with y'all. Like, Y'all make really good shit that I love looking at and like kicking my feet too. Yeah, this is kind of like the, it's like a, this is a hell of a group. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say um, my my good, good friend Carter Monier um, is probably my greatest kink, uh, my greatest kink, the end. Uh, my greatest <laughs> kink inspiration because she's always like pushing limits. Mm -hmm. um, she's like really into pain and she's always saying that she wants to keep having evil sex. <laughs> um, and uh, because of her, I now follow like just so many trans sex workers because she's like always networking with them. And like, they're just in my Twitter feed, like just really casually. I just, there's just all this like kinky trans porn and it literally, it just, I just, it makes me feel like okay and normal all, all the time I don't know it's just like to kind of like just always be a little bit simmered in it I'm just mm -hmm. like man That's I good. don't know yeah. when I see people stressing out about like uh I don't I don't know heteronormativity and mm -hmm. I, I'm just I just in trying to like hold up to a weird standard of beauty i'm just always like oh god i'm oh, yeah, so no. sorry for you kink is such a friendly community it's, yeah. it's so it is. so wonderful yeah. yeah yeah it's really nice um and i wanted to recommend if anybody is like very interested in kink there's this incredible movie called sick by and it's about this artist named bob flanagan uh who's obsessed with pain he had um cystic fibrosis and so as a child he was like constantly in and out of the hospital and he mm. just became like a, a pain obsessed person and he, he'll do like he'll like hammer a nail through his dick and stuff like that but the movie is like one of the most beautiful moving strange queer like kinky things I've ever seen in my life so highly recommend sick I have another uh, a movie recommendation that leads into if any of if any lesbians in the audience. Um, there's a really incredible lesbians? documentary yeah. called Blood Sisters that is like a, a, just an incredible like historical document essentially on the like leather dyke community in the like 80s, I'm pretty sure 80s through 90s. Um, and it has all these incredible interviews with people, you know, uh, talking about their sex lives, but also talking about the experience, which is what I've had because King is a pretty big part of my life. Um, of just like, this is where I met my family. And this is where I met all of these people who, yeah. whether they're lovers or not, are people yeah. who have like edified me and made my life better and yeah. made me like inhabit my body in a better way. Yeah. Um, and that's been mine. I mean, I <laughs> I met my last girlfriend in like a basement while she was stapling Christmas lights to like a woman <laughs> in latex, you know? And like, I've met a lot of my closest yeah. friends in New York through this community of people because there is a, I don't know, you're doing something that is 
dangerous in some ways, you know, um, it is, a, yeah. but it's very vulnerable and there's just a level of uh, communication and attention and care that I feel like that a community kind of pours into itself mm -hmm. um, yeah, that extends is. beyond just like having weird sex, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's not weird, it, 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 that's the thing. It doesn't, mm -hmm. I think, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if this is anybody else, but I, I was definitely kinky before I formed memories. Like, I know that oh, I yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. And it, before I knew what sex was, before I knew what sexuality was at all, I knew this about myself. Yeah. But it was always something that I never talked about to anybody. Yeah. It was a big secret, and it was so secret that I would forget about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it is only more recently that I'm comfortable sharing that. Like, yeah. the fact that I can say that is, it, it's a big change. But... It means that the, it, it, did, it was never weird. It, was, it never seemed strange. It was just a part of me. And I feel like people, and this is why I did Die Horny. This is why I did this comic. It was because whenever I did share it with someone, they would always react in one of two ways. It was either like, ooh, that's so saucy. It's be, you like it because it's kind of dirty and saucy, right? And then the other reaction was to be kind of frightened. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was so funny. I just kept thinking that was so funny because it's normal. It just yeah. seemed like normal to me and only normal to other people in the kink community. I, I, I grew up very weird and horny and I, I, was, I was Catholic and I lived in a conservative town and my best friend was always weirdly anti-porn. <laughs> and uh, Dang, yeah. uh, I think I stopped being ashamed of being horny like two years ago or something. <laughs> the yeah. pandemic did a lot of good work. Yeah. No, oh, that's so true. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it hasn't been very lovely. <laughs> but uh, honestly, you know, having like the, there's like something about being in that like little crock pot of shame that <laughs> made me who I am. Yeah. I don't know. And it's weird to like think back on all the shit I made that was like, horny but it was like extremely horny i was like always into like guys getting dismembered or <laughs> shit like that i was like classic well, yeah, yeah classic, uh, classic. Uh, like, classic. Just, like, classic. Man, his legs get cut amputees <laughs> yeah, was, but in a sexy way yeah, yeah. 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 but I, I mean i wasn't going anywhere with that <laughs> kind of to like tie in a little bit to what you were saying about how like ubiquitous these feel like whether people talk yes. about it or not whether you identify like how whatever relationship you have to kink and especially oh no um <laughs> i feel like amongst the queer people i know there is just there is a even the people that don't necessarily have a particular affinity for kink there is sort of a camaraderie that happens of being part of a demographic who is you know othered or marginalized for yeah. just like the way that you have sex um yeah. And I have found that, again, tying into kind of the conversation we were having earlier about this sort of push on, on one end for sort of a, a sexlessness or a palatability or whatever, I have very much felt, um, again, be partially because of getting more involved in like kink, partially just like the, the direction that I feel like I wanna go, but I, I feel very much like I want to err in the other direction where I want to become like illegible to anyone that is not you know like a, yes, I'm ungovernable yeah, yeah I don't know but just like a, a gay little freak like it's just yeah. I don't know I feel like sanding down the uh it's made me less interested in like sanding down yes. the yeah. edges and like the realism because it is realism because it's like a part of the life of every gay person I know to some yeah. degree yeah. so for me kink has always been attached to fandom because I think the first time I ever saw the word kink was on a live journal like post that was like this is a kink meme I'm like what is that <laughs> and it's interesting because fandom is such it's, it's a space for everyone I think my primary thing in life is like I love fandom I love talking about people's post-consumption processes and kink in fandom is just people exploring all sorts I mean their life experiences really through character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough spot because people, especially in fandom, love to project onto characters. Yeah. So if you see, I don't know, Bilbo doing something. <laughs> yes, hello? <laughs> you're you're gonna, you you're, you're, you I mean, I don't know, like come play. We haven't really, we haven't really said a lot of kinky like words. <laughs> 
hear. I mean, we talked about pain, which is good. Yeah. But like, it's, it's honestly the Bilbo part is what stressed me out. Yeah. Yeah. I won't lie. I, w- I won't lie. I was he like, had a full <laughs> sexual life. There's a good. There's a good it's one. Where but it's interesting. But it is so interesting. Actually, speaking of like middle grade versus like kink, I'm thinking of. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, uh, my husband, Gung- my oh, Gengarago. Oh, Gengar- 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 oh, my brother's Gengar- husband. Gengar- husband. Mm-hmm. My has, brother's husband. Yeah, Gengar- my, Gengar- uh, Gengar- yeah, my that like that book and that series versus all of his kink stuff, and they oh, coexist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, you can. can have a guy getting electrocuted by jumper cables or something that's scat porn, and it can be like the same author who's drawing about drawing a very cute domestic story. The guy living the dream. Contains multitudes. Yeah. <laughs> Shel Silverstein wrote and drew for Playboy and also yeah. did all the, the kids stuff. Like, yeah. the president exists. It's just people are forgetting about it mm-hmm. because they want to have a double standard, yeah. specifically against uh, uh, people who aren't cis men. Yeah. There's always yeah. a double standard. I mean, it's interesting to me again to talk right. about ace stuff, but like the idea right. of you know Puritans or Puritanism, let's say probably, or like kind of Puritan culture. Um, but that conversation never overlaps with the ace people for some reason. Yeah, which I isn't find, that funny? Which I find kind of interesting. And I feel like, like well, some of those people gross. are ace. And there certainly are um, sex repulsed people, for example, yeah. who would not be interested in this capacity, but there are a lot of ace readers of BL, of kink. Ace and, and like, kink, have uh, they're like a circle. There's <laughs> so much overlap yeah. there. Yeah. And people, right. people like put them separately. Cause they, they completely misunderstand both mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny when straight people do kink and it's like they don't know it. <laughs> I I asked a friend what if he had any kinks and he was like, yeah, I really like I really like lingerie. <laughs> well, I was I was thinking I'm about. Sorry, I don't mean to shame him. Was, God really fucking bless. That's really good. I love that. I would, <laughs> he I would like, explore that. He should really explore. I like that. kissing. Uh, <laughs> Keep going. No, but I was thinking. I was just thinking about. Push it harder. Who, it wants, was, who wears the lingerie? <laughs> there was this like married couple that was like going around TikTok and Twitter of the woman who's like hiding her husband's face from sex scenes. Oh Do you know what I'm talking about? She's like, he put his head on my shoulder during the sex scenes in Oppenheimer. These are, these are two adults. Oh, that wait, are I think I remember oh, this. And I was like, that is so kinky to me. Yeah. Where it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you, oh, also, you may not see another woman's yeah. body but mine. You know, like, that's. <laughs> Yeah, there's a not, kink not there. Kinky. That's the thing. They, they there's there's sex that's accepted and there's sex that's not accepted. And kink is supposed to be the sex that's not accepted. It's all the stuff outside of the tiny little circle mm-hmm. that's drawn, right? Mm-hmm. But that's just a label. Yeah. It's like if you if you take that label away, all sex is sex. <laughs> so you can anything can be a kink. Straight uh, uh, missionary position sex. That's your kink. Yeah. It, it, own it. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like things become normal. Things are normal. Things are real, and then they become like referential, and they become like, and then you can do like parody of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, role playing. Yeah, like, yeah. my kink is to role play being straight. <laughs> <laughs> I, did re- I did read it. Hello, oh, honey. Welcome that. back from work. <laughs> there, there was a really hot fic about that. Here I are two I children. <laughs> I don't think we should allow the children to hear about that. <laughs> yeah. Seems too racy. Or like really traditional, like uh, uh, heteronormative marriage. Yeah. Like serving yeah. your husband. Oh um, yeah, like trad life stuff. I'm always like, okay. You're, yeah. Okay, yeah. trad. <laughs> that's a dom sub relationship. Good for that's you. Kinky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come the and Dick join. Van Dyke show was extremely kinky. I just, I'm always like, yes. Yeah, so did like, you say a wife swap? Don't even no, I did not say wife swap. <laughs> I said the Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> there's just, there's potential in all of this to, for it to be really horny. And, and they take the sex out of it and say, no, this is traditional and pure and good. And, and actually the highest form of this is sexless and you should never have any desires. It's, it's such a double standard. Mm. Mm. We have about 10 minutes left, less than, so if people want to queue up, if they have any questions, if no. not... Behind the columns? Yeah, come on, Anyone freaks. behind the columns? Is there someone? No, there's two. Oh, there's two. Yeah, there's okay. two. There, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, this better not be more I of a comment than a question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you out. Don't worry, I don't do stand-up. Um, so I'm a big proponent of safe sex, both uh, in like the physical forms and then also with Hot. the mentality of it. So I want to ask, what is your recommended safe word? (laughs) (laughs) 
I had a, an ex that would use another ex's name. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, Jessica, if you're out there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I mean, recommended is way more fun than what yeah. I actually use. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Did you guys? Like, I was your... just gonna do something boring like colors, but yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. banana. I was say, like, half a ghoul or like yeah. <laughs> Gargoyle is good. Gargoyle. Um, Gargoyle. Patty melon. That's a that's a, a vicious animal. Yeah. Bilbo. I, <laughs> I try to think of like. Dildo? Like, is that what you said? No, not dildo. Oh, <laughs> I was going to Bilbo. say Bilbo's not. The D's are flipped. <laughs> There's one more question from the audience. Um, so uh, one of the audience members wanted to know, a couple of you mentioned Guru and dismemberment overall. Um, and uh, this audience member is very interested in Guru in particular and just wanted to hear more about kind of like those particular things and what your artistic relationship is with them. Did I get that accurate? Yeah. Perfect. I mean, for me, I think it's still, in some ways, one of the bigger influences that is still kind of apparent in the work that I do today, just in, I don't know, I felt like it was a, a lot of that stuff, um, I don't know, it was such a celebration of just like the decadence of an image. Like there was just a level, and partially because it was meant to be erotic, there was just a level of like beauty and of like investment in the beauty of a line um, that I think is gorgeous. And honestly, a big, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty like <laughs> my, uh, I would say that my real life kink life far exceeds my like phantom kink life in a lot of ways, <laughs> but I still, yeah. There's stuff that I can't do with my body. I can't get my legs cut off, but a drawing can, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So there is certain stuff that is just, like, safer for yeah. me to explore in a context, um, yeah, that isn't, like, permanently damaging to my own body. Yeah. There's, I think we're all confronted with a lot of horrors in, in reality, and exploring them through fantasies like that is cathartic. Yeah. And, and can... Um, sort of like alleviate a lot of guilt for kind of living through things? I, I don't know if this is like, I, I have come to, dis, to see this as trans, but like my self-insert characters when I was growing up were always getting like destroyed <laughs> bodily. Oh yeah. And often so that boys could live. <laughs> you know, it was always like, oh, Yamato, <laughs> like, I'll sacrifice my life for you. Oh my um, God, the Digimon being destroyed. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, oh, you know, she's a, she's a digi. It does it, it, there's? <laughs> anyways, that was my perspective. Guru anyway, Ramon I literally got, got year, ripped so. to pieces so that Matt yeah. could live. I really got to dismember. I think we had. That's true. Yeah, it's like a body uh, connection thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just I think that we can go but... here and then like. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I was wondering. I'm thinking about like the intersection between cake and horror. And I'm wondering about how you navigate that space, considering how people vilify kink. Like, is there a way that you can like balance those two elements without feeding into like the vilification of kink? Mm. Mm. I was just gonna say horror is really kinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've always felt like horror belongs to gay people anyway. So, yes, like, and queer yes. people. I think it, it it can be tricky. I I, I think that the 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 sort of like northern light that I have tried to follow when I get too bogged down and oh, oh are we done we for no you're good you oh, okay four more minutes <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, I just try to and maybe this is counterproductive it's the only thing that's kind of like kept me able to like make the work that I want to make but that I I try to envision it only being for the people that will get it you yeah. know like I I, I yeah. don't want my work to be didactic I don't want it to be educational I want it to resonate with the people that you know it uh, is for and comes from yeah um, and I do think that has come cut back on a little bit of the anxiety of just like the people that understand it are going to understand yeah. it the people that don't I can't convince you anyway you yeah. know um, and again, maybe that's a counterproductive way to think about it, but it, I think, ties back to that thing of, like, you can't... Uh, you can't please everyone. Yeah, and yeah. there are people that are, uh, you they're know... They're going to vilify it. Yeah, no they're going to find holes. They're going to put holes <laughs> right. in it wherever they can and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I won't even waste energy on those people and stuff because they're going to do that anyway. So Happy endings for monsters and horror films would be great. 
A lot of hap I I'd love to see more of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we probably have time for one more. Yeah, um, I was wondering if we could get uh, BL or kinky recommendations from you all. That's oh, maybe God. from what you've read earlier Ooh. or recently. <laughs> I, I meant to write this down, but there's one. I go on his website called, what, be, Beto.to. Wait, Beto? <laughs> yeah, and so I, I forgot like, the name, uh, like but the, 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 the word cactus is in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like something, the time you brought me a cactus or something. It's, it's, it's something, and, and, and oh. it, it has to do with a dom and sub relationship and stuff, and he like brings the guy a cactus, and he's like, this is a flower shop. You don't have to bring it. And then they just go straight into like restraints and all this other stuff. <laughs> and I was like, why is this called a cactus something? And I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, Would it be basic to say Hamlet machine? Like we all. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys should know if you don't. If you don't know, that's your entryway. <laughs> oh yeah, Hamlet machine. Yeah. Hamlet, um, yeah, totally. But yeah, just go to uh, Beto.to and there's a lot of stuff on there. Writing it down. I'm writing it down. That's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really uh, good site. Uh, be careful about clicking on, well, yeah. like anything. Anything. <laughs> anything. At Search On. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I had a book recommendation. I just I recently started reading uh, a book that was written in 1870 uh, by someone under a pen name. It's called An Illustrated History of the Rod. It's a history of flagellation and whipping in a lot of cultures in Europe. It's like, they has chapters of like, uh, flagellation in, in the monastery, the whipping of young ladies, like it's, and it's 500 pages long. It's this like luridly detailed depiction of the process and like the, the ways people did it. And some of it's not great. So like definitely skip chapters, but it's so delicious. <laughs> if, if you want to eat well, it's free. <laughs> it is free on archive.org, the illustrated history of the uh, rod. Yeah. Uh, follow Carter Monier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. If you want to know, well, if you want to see the horizon of sex. <laughs> Follow Carter Munir. I think the last comic I read that was like a, a, a true blue, like BL, there's this artist, um, they go by Zach as a pen name, Z-A-K-K, -K, that is just one of the most incredible like craftspeople I yeah. feel like I have encountered. Like inks, like nobody's business and they have a series. I think it's called Canis. Your hat or something Maybe. like that. It's just that gorgeous. Familiar. Like it's very light on the kink kind of, yeah. um, but it's just like one of the most gorgeous comics, one of the most beautifully drawn comics I've read in a very long time. And follow oh. Saint uh, Vagrant. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right, and my last recommendation. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's not BL because it's explicitly older men. Like. Uh, they draw like characters that are like 50, 60 and above. Dozer draws Ooh. one of my favorite artists. So yes. if you want soft old men, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, there's a book Great. being sold. That... <laughs> <laughs> there's you Dozer guys draws. Should check out the Chromatic Fantasy as well. Yeah. <gasps> They're selling it here at Silver Sprocket. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the best books I've ever put eyes on. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, good, good art is also quite horny. If it's well drawn, you just you just get all <laughs> fuzzy inside. I think we're out of time. Watch bottoms. Um, but I wanted to thank all of Watch our bottoms. panelists thank and thank all of you. We appreciate. Where can where can you be found in the in the event hall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> W28A. Yeah. H14. W4. <laughs>